This here is a frequency distribution table of a symmetric histogram. This is a perfectly symmetric histogram. Let's look at the mean of it. Now, in the previous video, or previous two videos, I explained how to get the mean of a frequency distribution table. We have five values lying between 1 and 3 here. We use mid-interval values. The middle of this interval is 2. The middle of this one is 4. Then we have 6, 8, and 10. And we calculate the mean by summing the product of fi, xi, and dividing by the sum of the frequencies. So that's in a previous video. This was explained in more detail in a previous video. The mean of a population is denoted by the Greek letter mu. In this situation, the mean is 6. Now, the mean is also the balance point of a distribution, as I explained in a previous video. So, you can see that for a perfectly symmetric distribution, the balance point is in the very center of all the x values. It's the midpoint of the line segment from 1 to 11. So as I explained in a previous video, we have the same amount of weight on the left side as we have on the right hand side. It's like a seesaw. What about the median of this distribution? The median is the value of x that bisects the area of this distribution. So this value here is 6. And it not only is a balance point, if we think of our histogram as a set of weights, but it bisects the area. So the area to the left of x equals 6 is the same as the area to the right of x equals 6. So for a perfectly symmetric distribution, the mean is equal to the median. I'm calling this a symmetric distribution instead of a symmetric histogram. Um, I will cover probability distributions in another video. But if our histogram is symmetric, then the distribution, the probability distribution corresponding to this histogram will also be symmetric. The mean is equal to the median. By the way, if we're dealing with a population, it, it's mu. If we're talking about a sample from a population, if this is a sample of x values from a pop population, we would denote the mean by x bar. Let's look at this frequency distribution table. It's got the same scales. The x values are the, well, the x values are the same. We're going from 1 to 11 and the intervals are the same. But now the frequencies are increasing as x increases. This is a skewed distribution. The histogram will be skewed to the left. It will have a tail at the left or the probability distribution will have a tail at the left. I've actually changed these values to make them considerably larger than some of the values, some of the frequencies. For our previous histogram, the area of each rectangle is the frequency. So the frequency of the values of x ranging from 1 to 3, while well we take mid a mid-interval value of 2 actually, is 2. So the area of this rectangle here is 2. The area of the next one is 8. So the number of x values that are 4, we take 4 as an estimate for this interval, is 8, 12 here, 15 here, 18 here. As before, I calculate the median, just get the total number of x values, 2 by 2 plus 8 by 4, etc., divided by the, well, sorry, get the sum of our x values, 2 by 2 plus 8 by 4, divided by the total number of x values, which is the sum of the frequencies, 7.42. So the balance point of this distribution is at 7.42. So 8 is about here, so 7.42 is about here. So you can see that this point is not the midpoint of our x scale, but it's the physical balance point, balancing point. Okay, we have a lot of weight to the right, but, well, we have heavier, heavier weights, if you like, but not so many of them. We have lighter weights to the left, but we have more of them. And you can see this weight of 2 is, has more leverage, if you like, than, say, the weight of 12, which is nearer. If we want to calculate the median, we have to bisect the area of this 
histogram. So the total area is 55. That's just the sum of the frequencies, the sum of these areas. 55 divided by 2 is uh, 27.5. So we need a, a value of x that gives an area of 27.5 to the left and 27.5 to the right. These three rectangles here add up to 22, the areas. So the median must be between 7 and 9. So we need to add on a certain amount that gives us an area of 27.5. So we have to add on an, another 5.5. 27.5 minus 22 is 5.5. So we want an area of 5.5 in this rectangle here. That's about a third of this rectangle. This rectangle has an area of 15. So 5.5 is about here. Actually, it's quite close to the median in this case, or the mean. So 27.5 is half of the area. So as I said already, these three triangles sum to 22. This region here is 5.5. So what fraction is 5.5 of 15? So we put 5.5 over 15 to get that fraction. But that fraction must equal this distance here, which I'm calling x. x is just this distance here, divided by the base of this rectangle, which is 2. Uh, this interval, this base, is 9 minus 7, which is 2. So the area of this region divided by the total area of the rectangle must equal the base of this region divided by the base of the rectangle. These ratios must hold. So I get x equals 11 over 15, which is 0 0.73 to two decimal places. So this distance here is 0 0.73. So we add that onto 7, which means that the median is this point here, and that's 7 plus x, or 7 plus 0.73. That's 7.73. So you can see the median is actually greater than the mean. And that's always the situation for a left skewed histogram. So the tail is to the left. That's why we call it left skewed. The median is greater than the mean. Now there isn't actually much difference here. The median is 7.73, the uh, mean is 7.42. But how could we actually remember this result, that the median is always greater than the mean for a left skewed distribution? What you could do is an, imagine an extreme distribution like this one here, a distribution which has a lot of values at this end. So high values of x, the highest values of x have high frequency. The lowest values of x have some frequency. We have a rectangle here, but all values of x in between have zero frequency. So we have no rectangles, or the heights of all the rectangles are zero. So imagine a, an extreme distribution like this, and imagine uh, the lowest values of x very far from the highest values of x. Where would the mean be? Where would the balance point be? Well, the balance point is not going to be too far to the right because even though we have a small weight here, it has a lot of leverage because it's a long distance from the mean. So the balance point might be somewhere out here. But where would the median be? Well, the median is the point that bisects the area. Since the area of this rectangle is more than double the area of this rectangle, the median is going to be somewhere in the base of this rectangle. So that the area to the right of the median is half the total area of the distribution. Half the sum of the two rectangles. So it's easy to imagine such a distribution. And if you're still not convinced, we could move this weight even further to the left. And that, that will push the mean further to the left. So the, But the median will never change. The median is fixed. The median is this value here. It's the value that bisects the area. So as long as we don't change the area of this rectangle or change the frequency, we could uh, extend, we could place this further, further to the left or place this one here further to the right maybe. The median will... Um, well, if we, if we keep this rectangle where it is, the median will always be 
in the base of this rectangle, whereas the mean is somewhere out here. So you can see the median is greater than the mean for a left skewed distribution. So this is an extreme example of a left skewed distribution. We could imagine an extreme example of a right skewed distribution where we have high frequency of values of, of low values of x and uh, we have a low, well, we have some number of extremely high values of x, but we have zero frequency for values of x between these low values and these extremely high values of x. So you can imagine the mean is, again, a balancing point. Think of a seesaw. The mean could would probably be out here somewhere, but the median bisects the area. So the total area of this distribution just consists of this rectangle and this rectangle over here. So the median will be somewhere here. So this would be the point such that the area of the distribution to the left, so this area here would equal the area to the right, which is this yellow area. So you can see that for the case of a right skewed distribution, the median is less than the mean. That's always true for a right skewed distribution. So for this extreme case, it's obvious, but for a much less extreme case, it's far from obvious. So for a left skewed distribution, the median is greater than the mean. For a right skewed distribution, the median is less than the mean.